Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Voroshilov Sharpshooter, released in the year 1999. Katya Afonina is a 20-year-old girl living in a small town in Russia. Her only family is her grandfather Ivan, a decorated World War II veteran. They live a simple and happy life in a small town in Russia. In the same neighborhood lives a group of three young boys. The youngsters are rowdy and spoiled, often hitting on the neighborhood girls with no fear of consequences. The group has designated Wednesdays as a day to party and hire prostitutes for sexual gratification. However, one particular Wednesday, they cannot seem to find any girl interested in partying with them. As they're brainstorming ideas, their eyes land upon Katya. One of the guys, named Vadim, used to be Katya's classmate in high school. When he discloses that he knows her, the other guys ask him to call her to their room. Vadim understands why his friends want Katya in the room and supports the idea. He rushes downstairs with Igor and asks Katya to come with them for a second. When she hesitates, they claim that it's their friend Boris's birthday and only Katya can cheer him up. She still doesn't want to go because her grandfather is waiting for her at home. However, when the boys beg her, she agrees to accompany them, but only for five minutes. On reaching the apartment, she notices several bottles of alcohol on the table. Katya feels uncomfortable but doesn't want to seem rude. The guys offer her a glass of alcohol and urge her to drink. They also mention that Katya was very good at singing in school and make her sing for Igor. While she's busy, Boris secretly mixes something in her glass without her knowing. Soon the guys start getting a little too close. Katya gets up and tries to walk outside, but the drug makes her dizzy. The guys bring her to another room and surround her. Their intentions are finally clear to her, but Katya can do nothing to defend herself. The leader of the group seems to be Boris, who pushes her to the bed and tears her clothes. The other guys hold her down and assault her sexually. A few hours later, it gets dark. Katya has given up on trying to resist and is lying limp on the floor. The guys finally let her go and give her some money to keep her mouth shut. Katya is so traumatized that she hardly says anything. She simply walks outside, throws the money away, and goes back home. After she leaves, her former classmate Vadim is nervous that they'll get in trouble. However, the other two are confident no one can do anything to them, mostly because Vadim's father is a higher police official. Somewhere else, Katya reaches home and falls to the floor crying. Her grandfather notices the bruises on her thighs and realizes what happened. He glows red in anger and asks her who did it. After finding out that it was the neighborhood guys, he rushes to their house to teach them a lesson. A fellow neighbor stops him on the way and suggests they call the police first. Sometime later, a group of policemen barge into the apartment and arrest the perverts. The inspector is just as furious as Katya's grandfather and wants to punish the guys. Initially, the criminals claim they didn't do anything wrong. The inspector takes them to different rooms and threatens to put them in prison with murderers who will sexually violate them as they did to Katya. Scared, Boris finally admits that they did in fact bring her to the house and sleep with her. Just then, Vadim's father and police colonel Nikolai arrives at the scene. He meets the inspector and tries to use his authority to bring the criminals to his office to handle the matter on his own. However, the inspector claims that the criminals have already confessed to their crime and the police have found a sheet with Katya's blood on it. This means that they're guilty and will have to be taken into custody immediately. When Nikolai still insists for the criminals to be brought to his office, the inspector bluntly asks him to hand him his orders in writing. Just then, a junior officer discloses that the criminals conduct a female's day every Wednesday and have misbehaved with many women. Everyone from the neighborhood has confirmed that the boys are a bunch of perverts who need to be imprisoned immediately. Nikolai walks away for the time being, but is determined to free his son. The following morning, Ivan wakes up and is worried when he cannot find Katya anywhere. She calls him from the bathroom and claims that she can hardly look at herself in the mirror. Ivan feels awful for his granddaughter, but can do nothing to make her feel better. He wants to call a female doctor from a floor above theirs to check up on Katya. However, she declines, claiming that she doesn't want anyone to know what happened to her. Ivan reveals that the entire neighborhood knows because of the police search that happened yesterday. 
Katya is horrified at the thought. Now that everyone knows, she thinks that all her life she'll be known as the girl who was assaulted. Later, the doctor comes to check up on her and finds out that she's physically weak. She suggests Katya stay home and rest for a few days. Later that day, Ivan finds out that the criminals were let free because of Vadim's father's influence. He is furious at everyone but hasn't given up on trying to bring his granddaughter justice. The two go to meet a police officer to appeal to the court. However, the man also turns out to be a corrupt officer bribed by Nikolai. He laughs at Katya's story and in turn accuses her of being too friendly with the guys. He believes that she went to their apartment on purpose and had sexual relations with them so one of them could marry her. Katya is left heartbroken after the incident. She has no strength to fight for justice and wants to forget everything. In contrast, Ivan doesn't want to let the matter slide. The following day, he goes looking for the guys and finds them hanging out in a car. When the guys ask him what he wants, Ivan comments that he's memorizing their faces and walks away. The group thinks that they're invincible, so they don't think much of it. Little do they know, they have made the biggest mistakes of their lives. Following the encounter, Ivan goes to his old friend and a judge to ask for his help. But to his disappointment, the judge says he should have raised Katya better so she wouldn't turn into a prostitute. Ivan curses him and walks away, finally deciding to take matters into his own hands. After that, he visits a realtor and sells his seasonal house for $5,000. He plans to use the money to take revenge. That afternoon when he returns home, Katya tells him that Vadim's father Nikolai had come to the house to hand her an envelope of money. A furious Ivan runs to Nikolai's house and throws the envelope in his face. Later, Katya informs Ivan that her aunt has left them the keys to her apartment to take care of her birds. Ivan goes to said apartment and sees that the criminal's apartment is right in front. He wants to take advantage of the place to take revenge. Later, he goes to the market and meets an official weapon seller who tries to sell him pistols and revolvers. When Ivan asks for a rifle, the man seems nervous and says he refuses to have anything like that. Ivan is about to leave, but another seller approaches him and reveals that he overheard his conversation. He claims to have the stuff that Ivan wants and is willing to sell it for the right price. Ivan is driven to a secret location where the sellers introduce him to several guns. One SVD sniper rifle in particular catches Ivan's attention and he buys it. Before leaving, he tests the rifle on a dummy and doesn't miss a single shot. The gun is also equipped with a silencer which makes the seller believe he's getting it for illegal purposes. On returning home in the evening, Ivan sees that Katya's mother has returned from Turkey with a new boyfriend. She's never really been present in Katya's life, busy enjoying her life with her boyfriends. Initially, she gives them gifts and seems genuinely happy to be back. She also urges her daughter to forget what happened and live life happily. But a few hours later, she tells Ivan that she needs some money. Ivan figures out that she only returned to ask for money and not for Katya. When he calls her out for it, the woman admits it and threatens to take money from Vadim's father Nikolai instead. In a fit of rage, Ivan throws her out of the house, ordering her to never show her face again. The next morning, he goes to his neighborhood friends playing chess in a park. When he notices the guys entering their apartment, he secretly goes to Katya's aunt's place that has the perfect view of their living room. Using the rifle, he shoots Boris right in the crotch, castrating him in an instant. Right after, he hides the gun and returns back to his friends, acting like nothing happened. Somewhere else, Boris is rushed to the hospital by his friends. Later, Nikolai is with Vadim and Igor, asking them what exactly happened. He thinks that the guys were playing with guns and accidentally hit Boris. The two deny the claims, insisting that they were just talking. Nikolai asks them to be careful, suspecting that someone is trying to take revenge on all three of them. Meanwhile, the police inspector starts to suspect that Ivan is behind the shooting. Since he has the perfect reason to seek revenge, the inspector knows that sooner or later Nikolai will come for Ivan. A few days later, Ivan again goes to Katya's aunt's place, this time to target Igor. Igor is inside his car, listening to a song with no care in the world. Ivan shoots the car's gas tank, making it explode. Igor runs outside with his lower body in flames. People nearby save him, 
but the accident causes the entire lower half of his body to get third-degree burns, to the point he cannot stand anymore. Now, Nikolai is sure that his son is the next target. He tells Vadim to be careful and barricade the house because the shooter might find him anywhere at any time. The thought scares Vadim and makes him paranoid. Somewhere else, the inspector goes to Katya's house to meet Ivan and talk to him about the accidents. He can't find Ivan in the house, but Katya discloses that he often goes to her aunt's house to take care of the birds. The inspector realizes that said house is right opposite Boris's apartment, where the accidents took place. He secretly pockets the keys to Katya's aunt's apartment to check if his suspicion is true. At the same time, Nikolai and his fellow corrupt policemen come to Ivan's house with a search warrant. They're sure that he was behind the accidents and want to check for the rifle. However, on searching the entire house, they find nothing. Just then, Katya's aunt knocks on the door asking for her keys. The policemen decide to check her apartment as well. Ivan is nervous because he has hidden the rifle in her place. But to his surprise, the police search every corner and still cannot find it. Nikolai asks Ivan for the last time to not harm his son, to which Ivan replies that something has already happened to him. Nikolai takes it literally and runs to check on Vadim. After he leaves, Ivan clarifies that he has done nothing to Vadim, but him becoming a rapist clearly shows something has happened to him. When Nikolai reaches home, he bangs on the door, asking Vadim to open it. In turn, Vadim shoots his own father through the door, thinking that he's a killer. It turns out that after days of fright, he has lost his sanity. The police officers bring a psychiatrist for him, but the hopes of his recovery are low. Then, we see the inspector invite Ivan to his house and tell him that he had confiscated the rifle before the police could find it. He knows that the boys were at fault, and hence leaves Ivan with just a warning. In the last scene, Ivan returns home to see his granddaughter singing a beautiful song indicating that she is healing slowly from the incident. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.